everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to speckle some yarn, playing with one specific variable to see if we observe any differences in our results when we're trying countertop speckles where we have yarn on a counter, we speckle with dry powder, and then we will steam set that yarn. Now one variable that I can't really control for, or I haven't ever really controlled for, is the amount of water that is inside our yarn when we start speckling. Sometimes I will have the yarn be almost completely dry, and other times I'll have the yarn be a little bit more wet, but not dripping. And my hypothesis is that if we have a little bit more water in the yarn, that some of the colors may spread a little bit further, resulting in some less sharp speckles. But now we're gonna go and look and see how much of a difference this makes on our yarn. Today we will dye 400 grams of Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. This yarn is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. It speckles beautifully, and I've been pre-soaking it in some plain tap water for a couple of hours. But since we are gonna be doing countertop speckles, I'm gonna add some acid in here. I just added some white vinegar. Some of the speckles we will be adding will have citric acid mixed in with our acid dye powder, but I still wanna add some acid into this pre-soak so that way uh, all of the yarn is starting from a similar place. It's just that two of them uh, will squeeze out almost all the water and two of them will have be a little bit more damp when it's time to start speckling. And so I'm gonna just set this aside uh, for a little bit. Once you add the acid, it doesn't need much longer. I could have added the acid at the beginning, uh, but I wanted to wait until I was filming to show how much I added, which was just about two glugs. Uh, but now let's go think about what colors we're gonna use today. I have some Dharma acid dyes that were already mixed with citric acid from some older videos. I believe this is Tangelo, which is sort of a pinkish orange color. And this is some Dharma True Black. And so I will be using both of these colors today to be our speckles mixed with citric acid, which overall should give us a finer, sharper result. I am also gonna bring in a red. This is Dharma Cherry Bomb. And this won't have any citric acid mixed in. This should spread out more, but maybe with all of these, it'll spread out less when we don't have as much water present. Whenever I am going to be using the dry dye powder today, I will be wearing my deluxe rubber respirator mask with P100 filters, safety glasses, and gloves. So I will sound more muffled uh, once I am doing the dyeing. And the last thing I need to do to set up is to start heating up my steamer basket. Um, I will have two of these on the stove, each has a couple inches of water, and we'll use this to set the color after I'm satisfied with the coverage that we have here on the counter. Okay, let's get going. With our black zip ties, I am going to squeeze out as much of the water as I can with my hands. Um, I could put it through the spin dryer, but I do want there to be some moisture in it, but I'm hoping to get it to a spot where if I squeeze, we're not gonna get very much coming out anymore. This is probably about as dry as I would want yarn to be if I was going to do speckling on the countertop. Now, with this other yarn, with the lighter ties, and I'm realizing you can't see the zip ties, but I did color coordinate the zip ties so that way I could make this easier for future Rebecca. I am going to remove them and still remove some water, but I'm not gonna squeeze it all out. I'm gonna squeeze some. I squeeze out a lot of water. I could squeeze more, but just a gentle squeeze more falls, but I have it so it's wet but not dripping. So I could have walked it over to the side of the room without making a mess. And now into this water with vinegar, I am gonna add a fifth skein. So that way we can use this as a yarn mop over the project to wipe either my gloved fingertips on or to wipe up the counter in the end um, if we need to soak up any excess dye. So that's just gonna be off camera. And now let's spread out our more saturated skeins. And so you can see within the yarn itself, it is more clumped and I can still spread it out, but it does actually look different at this stage, which is interesting and fun. So I'm still trying to spread things out as much as I can. And there doesn't 
necessarily need to be space between them, but I will say with there being less water in it, it's easier to get it sort of um, spread and plumped. Um, it's a little, it's still possible, but it's a little easy, harder to get strands to separate from their neighbors with more water present. So now I'm gonna go put my mask and everything on. Right, let's start with the cherry bomb. I'm gonna take up a little pinch of powder and slowly use this to speckle onto the yarn. And I do have a goal of using approximately a similar amount of dye between the two skeins, or sorry, the four skeins, at least as similar as I can, but it is possible that I will be a little bit heavier in some areas than others. It's a little bit hard to control for that, but I'm doing the best that I can to just take up a little bit and let it fall. But this is why we're doing both dye with no citric acid like this one, and some dyes with citric acid. But now I'm gonna take these gloved fingertips and wipe them onto the yarn mop to get the dye off my fingers. And I will make sure my fingers are completely dry before we go into the next color. Okay, now I have the true black. And it is possible to get sharp speckles with just straight powder. But whenever you add citric acid to your dye, it becomes a little bit easier to layer it on because since the dye kind of coats that citric acid powder a little bit, uh, it allows you to have larger clumps of powder and it, you, it's much easier to sprinkle it on like salt. Um, I guess really you can compare the consistencies as similar to sprinkling uh, salt onto a dish, or really, I guess, I suppose I could say sugar, just like regular sugar, versus trying to sprinkle powdered sugar. And which one would be easier to spread out more versus having clumps? Hey, I definitely did not go that light with the black speckles. I could have gone even lighter, uh, but, We'll see how this goes for sure. For our tangelo color, I took some out of the spice jar and put it in this container. So that way I could use my fingertips as well. Let's add some of this on. Go here. And I will say so far, it does appear that I am seeing more spread, maybe where there's more water, but it's also hard to say definitively because it's possible a lot of the dyes over here where it's a bit drier just haven't really sunk in very far at all yet. Okay, and as far as the yarn mop goes, there was not very much tangelo on my fingertips at all. But now let's try to zoom in a little bit so you can get a better sense of what we're seeing with these speckles. But even here pulled back, you see more color here where the yarn is wetter. And that's because those dyes are sinking in a lot faster. Um, but as I said, we're gonna look closer. With both our red and tangelo, you can see super sharp speckles for now. Uh, I'm not sure how much these will spread over time. That is something that we will still have to wait and see. The black speckles are looking great right now, um, super sharp. And yeah, there's a fairly big impact of all of these colors here. On the dryer yarn, the black speckles are still looking pretty sharp, uh, but they do appear a bit smaller to me, or in some cases, it's weird. It's almost like they appear a little longer as if they are sort of spreading a little bit, but in a different kind of way, which is interesting to me. <laughs> the red and the tangelo also just feel sort of smaller, like there's less impact. I don't really see 
anywhere where it looks like the dye is sitting on the surface and hasn't sunk in. And honestly, I'm not sure with what we will see through all this going forward. But anyway, let's go ahead and let everything sit for five minutes from the time when I last added dye. And we'll see if we observe anything different from what we see right now. It's been five minutes. I don't really see a difference from what I saw before, but you will have seen the previous clip, so you can let me know down in the comments below if you saw any difference. But now I'm going to flip over the yarn and we'll start applying dye to the other side. When I'm flipping the yarn, I want to take care to gently place it down and not rub it, knowing that if I rub the dyes, that will cause some spread. And so since I'm trying to avoid spread, I'm doing more of a lift and place. And then you see I'm sort of like picking and moving to spread the yarn out here. So that way we can access a lot of fibers. Now that was really easy to do in the yarn that was less saturated. The yarn that's more saturated is heavier. So the process of like flipping and moving it may cause more spread here than what we saw in the other. Cause yeah, it's just a lot heavier overall and it's a little harder to get it as nicely spread out. And so I'm doing my best, but yeah, I can definitely feel the difference here. And I will say right now, I'm enjoying the effect I'm seeing here a little bit more, but I'm enjoying working with this yarn, the dryer yarn, better. I speckled the yarn using the same three colors we did before, using both the Tangelo and True Black from Dharma that were mixed with citric acid, and then the Cherry Bomb dye that had no citric acid in it. After I applied the dye to all four skeins, I waited about five minutes before moving the yarn around to determine if there were any other areas where I wanted to add dye. My goal was to have a similar amount of coverage at least in terms of application of the dye on all of the yarn, even though at this stage we knew that we see the dye a lot more on the skein that is more saturated to start with. While we are speckling, I wanna take this opportunity to give a huge shout out and thank you to Tamara Spanez, Don Jans, Jessica Parco, Karen Siegel, and the rest of the Fiber patrons. Patreon is a really great platform where you can help support the content here on the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel, and patrons get a lot of fun perks, like early access to the Dye Pop PS series, behind the scenes sneak peeks, and more. You can go and learn more at patreon.com slash Chemnitz. Patrons, thank you all so much for all of your support. This time I haven't waited five minutes because we're not really seeing much of a change, and I'm ready to go steam set the yarn. I'm gonna put the two dryer skeins together in one steamer basket and the two moisture skeins together in another. And we're going to steam set all of that yarn for 30 minutes. And now our counter is fairly dirty, so I'm going to bring over our yarn mop to start mopping up this excess dye. Going for areas on here that are, have a little bit less coverage already, just to try to get some more color on this fun random skein. Now, I did steam it briefly already because the red, the, that cherry bomb seemed to spread a fair amount and it was getting harder to get it off of my gloves. So it did have about like five minutes in the steamer basket at one point, but that's about it. And yeah, the skein would actually coordinate really well with either of the others. And plus, I don't know, I just enjoy these yarn mop type colorways. Now, I will go ahead and wipe down the counter, I guess, properly uh, using, you know, water and whatnot. But uh, it's also amazing just to see how little of an impact that Tangelo makes. But anyway, once the steamer basket is free, we will steam set this yarn. The 30 minutes are up 
And this was our more wet yarn. It is looking pretty much the same as it had before. And now it is even more wet. <laughs> Uh, just because of the nature of steaming. Just gonna remove some of that, but we'll let it cool completely so we can wash it. The good news is I see lots of fine speckles there. And here is our dryer yarn, which now is probably gonna be a lot wetter. Um, and yeah, I think that even with a similar amount of dye, it does feel like there's a little bit less overall. It's definitely not dripping still, so whatever moisture it absorbed, is not quite as much necessarily as the other one. But again, we'll let everything cool so then we can wash it. I'm having a little bit of an epiphany right now as well in that some of the differences that I've seen when I see speckles not take as sharp as I've thought maybe they are could have something to do with the pigment that I'm using and not just the amount of saturation of the yarn. I believe we do see a difference here, but I see speckles in both cases. So the saturated yarn wasn't so saturated that the speckles just all like spread and we don't see any. There was a time, I think it was probably a little over a year ago, when I was dyeing the bonus skeins for the, I think, 2021 summer mini skein mini series, that I used emerald green on the yarn. And it spread a lot, but that color doesn't strike very fast. And so that could have been a result of that green and not the amount of water that was in the yarn like I had hypothesized back then. And so, that brings me to another reminder, is that sometimes things you do with a certain pigment may work really well under certain conditions, and then if you use another dye, it may not work quite as well. Now, there's some colors we know tend to take a longer time to strike and where a little bit goes a long way, especially neon fluorescent colors. But when it comes to other colors, like which green strike fast versus strike slow, then it may come down more to just experience and as we learn about these colors and how they behave. And so this is just my little reminder to myself that just because everything seemed to speckle pretty well here today in both of these conditions, uh, it may be worth considering how we want to do things moving forward. And that the time I was like, ooh, too much water really made a difference, maybe that isn't quite what happened. It actually could have also been the amount of acid, which I didn't measure today. So there are other variables obviously at play from project to project that could be worth considering as you are planning out your dying projects. And now it's just about time to go wash our yarn, but while I have your attention, please subscribe and ring that bell to turn on notifications. Let's wash all of our speckled yarn and our yarn mop together. I'm glad I went for different colored zip ties for the speckled yarn. I see nice speckles on everything. Maybe with some more water, some of them blended together a little bit more, but we'll take a closer look once everything is dry. The good news is that I'm not seeing any color bleeding. I will say that having the yarn mop in here is throwing me off a little bit because there we have color spread. But let's just add a little bit of some clear dish soap and we'll fill this up. And let's see. Again, I'm not really anticipating any color bleeding, but it's always good to check. And a big reason why I like checking on camera is so that way when it happens to me, you can see how frequent or thankfully infrequent uh, bleeding occurs. But anyway, I'm gonna finish rinsing out all the soap. I'm gonna put my yarn through my Nina Soft Spin Dryer, hang it out to dry, and well, we'll come back and look at these speckles. Here is the finished yarn. The black ties had less water while I was speckling, and then the lighter ties on the bottom here had more liquid in there. When I'm standing this far back, I do see more color spread when we had more water present. But if we go and zoom in a little bit, and here we have the more water and the less water, it's honestly really hard to tell because in both cases, I see sharp speckles. 
Um, it just looks like in this place I added less of the red dye. Here's a little bit heavier. But like they're spread around there, they're spread around here. If we look at some orange, we're seeing similar things. In fact, some of these may look, with the less water, look a little bigger, but we also have some others uh, around there that are a little bit sharper. And then the black, both of them have areas where we see sharper speckles and then see a little bit more splotched. And so it's hard to make a conclusion about the differences here. Is there a difference? Yes. Would I call these the same colorway? Yeah, maybe just a different dye lot. Because overall, uh, it just sort of appears, and again, it could be a little bit of spread or something, but it appears that I added a little bit more dye to the yarn that was wet and less to the other one. And so, yeah, I'm not noticing a huge difference on splotches or speckles. And really, that is a conclusion in of itself that the amount of water that you have in your yarn when you are going to be doing the speckling makes a bigger difference during the actual speckling itself. So what you see and when you can tell where the distribution of color and how much color is there, it makes a bigger difference at the time that you're actually dyeing than it seems to on the finished yarn where things are looking very, very similar. And so honestly, I think my preference would be to go somewhere in the middle to have enough water in the yarn so that way I can kind of see the colors right away. There's enough liquid there for them to get a little bit wet, but damp enough so and not saturated enough so that way it's easier to like move around and I'm less worried about accidentally like smudging things. I think that the bigger impact when it comes to doing speckles on the countertop comes to the pigment itself. And again, that time I was using that green, maybe it was emerald green or something, that's just a color that doesn't strike very fast. So I didn't really get speckles using the straight powder without citric acid that I was kind of hoping for because I think of just, I picked the wrong color for the effect or, and the wrong technique. I probably should have mixed that dye with some citric acid and I would have been able to see more like discrete little spots. Our yarn mop is very pink, very red, with a few notes that are a little bit more orange and gray. And I think that it is so much more red because, well, when I was speckling with a straight red dye powder, um, there was more dye on my fingertips and so more to wipe off. And that brings me to something else that I haven't really discussed. And that is really taking a little bit of a look of some of these red speckles versus the other colors. I think this shot is one pretty good example. Uh, with the, I think, tangelo and the black, we were able to get super fine and pretty sharp little speckles overall. Now granted, in some places there was some more blending like of the black, but overall they are sharper than what we were able to achieve with the red. Yes, there are some sharp speckles in there, but there's also more spread, which could both be because of the uh, red color that I used, but also because when I was speckling, there was likely more powder hitting in each spot. And so I would really like to play around more with speckling with citric acid and without on the same yarn more in the future. And if that is something you would like to see, please subscribe, turn on notifications, and leave a comment below. When it comes to the yarn that I dyed in this video, I will end up having two separate listings in my shop, one for the yarn mop, and then one for all four skeins of the speckled yarn, but I do plan on labeling them like lot A and lot B, just because those differences do kind of exist. And if someone ordered two skeins, for example, I would want to make sure that both that were dyed with the same technique were sent to the same customer because those are the ones that are the most similar. Sometimes when I have a listing, when there's two lots, uh, then I say like, you know, pick A or pick B. Sometimes there's a little bit more of a difference between them, but I typically have things under one listing when they're either so similar that if you looked at them separately, you might not be able to tell which is which or that they're different. Um, or, yeah, I mean, I guess that's mainly why I do it. 
But anyway, while I still have your attention, please go check out the Chemnitz Patreon. It's a really great way to help support the content here and to get more Chemnitz content every month. You can find a link down in the video description. Thank you so much for watching.